Welcome everyone. This is Why Use Groovy Lang, How to Convince Your Boss and Others. I'm Jen Strader, uh, also known by my Twitter handle, code generator. <laughs> um, and I'm sure that my, um, my uh, boss and our company would very much like if you also associated any uh, media with Zenjob.com Twitter uh, handle. Okay, so uh, have this automated. There should have been a tweet that went out about, what, seven minutes ago now that has the links to these slides on speaker deck if you want to look at them later. Okay. So like I said, I am currently working for Zenjob uh, in Berlin, but I've been using Groovy for a lot longer than that. I actually uh, found, or look at it, it's, it's right at about the five year mark that I started my first job using Groovy and, and Grails mostly. Uh, and I spent a good deal of time in Minnesota in the States. You can probably tell that from my accent. And uh, then if you saw me last year, I spent 10 months here in Copenhagen uh, on a really prestigious research grant. Uh, and I got to do some contributions to open source projects, take some classes, learned a lot about the Groovy compiler. Um, and so I, I have a, a, a pretty good knowledge of, of where a lot of this stuff is coming from in the Groovy community. I've also done a lot of uh, work. Uh, I, if you haven't already, you should join the Groovy community Slack. Um, I've done a lot of work with uh, diversity and, and helping that as well. Okay. So, uh, anyway, yeah, so now I work for Zenjob, at, based out of Berlin, and we're, of course, all here, so <laughs> Flo, Flo is uh, avoiding, avoiding that, but uh, yeah, so they're back there. If you are interested in moving to Berlin, uh, please come talk to us. We have a lot of, a lot of openings. So, that is a lot about me. At this point in the conference, uh, you should hopefully have an idea of what Groovy is, even if you're a, a new person to Groovy. Uh, but I imagine that a lot of us are, are Groovy enthusiasts. So uh, by show of hands, who, who uses Groovy every day? Or not every every day, but for work? Okay, almost everyone. Who is using it for, for side projects, but you don't really have buy-in from your boss yet? Two or three, okay. And how many, I know there are a couple, are new to Groovy? Hi. <laughs> so um, hopefully we can, we can address kind of some different concerns that everyone has. Uh, when you use Groovy, what kind of context do you use? Uh, I imagine that most people have used Grails or are using Grails, okay. Um, actually, not as many as I expected. Uh, who, who uses Spock for testing? Hopefully everyone that's using Groovy, because that's the best testing framework, right? Um, and <gasps> yeah, even if you, yes, yes, we will get to that. <laughs> even if you're using Java, you sh can and should be using Spock for your tests. Um, yes, uh, you may also see it in your organizations through Gradle. Um, so one of the things that I do not have experience yet with is Griffin, but woohoo! Yes, we have at least two. So who who has used Griffin? Two. You're ahead of me. Um, and and so hopefully a lot of these things will hold true for for that community as well. Um, and even yeah. So although although at Zenjob we mostly use Grails, uh, companies that are using Jenkins also use a very different type. Of, of Groovy through the Groovy DSL, if you're using pipelines or, or other prog uh, programs. But um, the, the whole point here is that uh, no matter what level of Groovy usage, we're, we're a very small community, right? And uh, so I found this, uh, or secondhand, right? <laughs> I, uh, something that, that Andre said a while back on, on Twitter that kind of got reformatted and then I had to go back and get the original. And he says that Groovy developers don't seem to care about hype, they simply get the job done. And so that's kind of the uh, sentiment that I've been seeing all around the community 
Uh, and so what can we, what can we do? So this, this is not a talk about um, the, the technical uh, specifics of, of why Java, is, uh, Java and Groovy are, are different, but uh, what some things we can do as community members to, to promote Groovy. Uh, I want to, to highlight some of the best things, some things that Groovy does that other languages don't do in a positive way and dispel some myths that uh, if you try to start, uh, hey, we should use Groovy at our organization, there are some things that other people may say, maybe they're outdated, maybe they're just wrong misconceptions about the language in general, and then provide some ways that, uh, that you can hopefully try to get your, your shoe in the door with Groovy like Spock. So um, I wanted to promote some, some positive uh, feelings about Groovy after seeing a lot of hate that other, uh, other communities have started giving Groovy. Uh, and so I posted this on Twitter uh, a while back, at, like just after the beginning of the year. And uh, as you can, you can kind of see in the Twitter, I got a lot of comments on this. There's like 52 different things. And I took all of the data, and, I, and there's actually even more that are subtweets and messages offline. Uh, in response to the favorite things that everyone likes. And so I took the data and I kind of, I weighted it. Unfortunately, I did not use Groovy for this. Uh, thank you very much to Tim Yates for helping me learn R in order to, to create some graphics. Um, and I'm definitely not a pro. I'm sure you could, other people can make this look much nicer and prettier. But I liked a lot of the, the, the way that it weighted and highlighted some favorite things about the community. So the, it kind of breaks down into to three different types of information that we get out of this. So a lot of them are about features. So we get uh, collections uh, and we get operators, things like null safe, the spread operator, the Elvis operator. Uh, and so those are things that, that most people learn in, in a very intro to, to Groovy way. But there are some other things in here that uh, are really not, not highlighted as much as maybe some other aspects of the feature or f other aspects of the language. So uh, more, more Twitter. There's going to be several instances of, of people quoting stuff on Twitter uh, that, uh, that Groovy Lang is really appreciated for, for things like metaprogramming and ASTs, the fact that we can create DSLs. The most popular, some of the most popular usages of, of Groovy are in the DSLs, right? Uh, yeah. But it's not just about uh, the technical features, but things about what, what Groovy brings uh, to, to code and to processes and, and software development. Things like readability and expressiveness, uh, a lot of and, and you see a lot of adjectives uh, came up in the in this graph too. And of course, it, we can't leave it without mentioning our wonderful ecosystem of related technologies. So Spock, Spock, <laughs> Spock is pr the number one answer by far. It's it's definitely the one biggest in here. But there are um, the the other frameworks and, and libraries end up uh, mentioned as well. And the community. So we have a really awesome community. I'm so glad that all of you are here and uh, supporting and learning more. A lot of you in here are speakers. You've contributed back to, uh, to open source projects. And so community came up as a, as a pretty important feature to a lot of people. And even there's even two mentions of specific people uh, that, that came up as well. Uh, shout out to, to Russell and Dan. So if you want to, I, I know that this graphic is kind of hard to read, especially the smaller text. Uh, I created a bit.ly for it. Uh, so it's bit.ly groovy word cloud, and that'll link back to the, the Twitter conversation. And you can read all of the responses. So that kind of summarizes that we think Groovy is awesome because it has great features, a thriving ecosystem, and a really friendly community. And so hopefully those are some things that you can, uh, can stress in a, in a very positive way. But once you start, and maybe you've noticed this already, if you start talking about Groovy, there are a lot of things that kind of come up, uh, and, and you'll need to come up with good counter arguments. So, uh, 
I'm going to play this a little bit like Groovy Puzzlers, if you are familiar with that. Who's, who's played Groovy cu Puzzlers before? Okay, about half. Um, so this really works if you, you, you interact with me. I'm going to put a slide up, and uh, I'm going to ask who thinks it's true. And instead of A, B, and C, there's usually, and there's usually a trick answer in there, too. I'm <laughs> hopefully this one is, is just true and false. Uh, and then, then we'll kind of discuss why, why they're true and false. So let's start with a really, really, well, I'm sorry, what I, I hope is a, is a very easy one. So who, I'm going to start true first. So who thinks that Groovy is the same thing as Grails? Okay, good. So uh, this, is, this is, of course, false. But it comes up a lot. And, and it's usually not as blatant as someone saying Groovy is the same thing as Grails. It's usually uh, you see job ads that the words are, are intermixed. You see um, the argument, oh, yeah, I really like Groovy as a language, but I don't want to use Grails. And so there are lots of other ways that uh, if you don't want to use Grails, you can still use Groovy as a language, including the other frameworks. Um, I actually haven't updated this now. We can add Micronaut, right? <laughs> um, and, and so hopefully that's something that, that'll be easy to, to counter. So uh, let's get a little more uh, interesting. So Groovy is, Groovy is a scripting language. So who thinks that Groovy is a scripting language? Right. <laughs> so Groovy, the, the key word here is just. Uh, and I see that in a lot of blog posts re recently um, that a lot, of, a lot of people say, oh, yeah, like Groovy Groovy's great for scripting but then neglect to mention all of the, the other ways. So we, I mean, in, in Grails in particular, we follow object-oriented uh, paradigms uh, and functional too. So uh, if you haven't looked at, I think Paul talks about some of the stuff in the keynotes, but there are a lot of functional uh, ways that you can, can integrate uh, with Groovy too. So this is perhaps one of the the biggest things. So the creator of Groovy has this very well-distributed quote that says that if he knew about Scala back in 2013, he never would have created Groovy. So um, I think pretty much most everyone in here uh, understands the, or is on the same page with me. So who has heard this uh, quote before. Not that it's true, but who has heard it? Okay, so most of the people in here. And so anytime that I, I, I found a really good uh, counter argument to this now. So there's a, a more recent, and I actually uh, saw, so he spoke at DevOx Belgium in 2017. Uh, and, and is actually giving talks on Groovy again. And now, uh, now we have a new one. <laughs> so we can say that uh, he's using Groovy almost every day with his Jenkins work, and uh, he doesn't even use Scholar anymore. So, so hopefully uh, that older one will, will go away. And this, this is kind of like really interesting when we talk about like the way that the language has evolved, right? People, um, the, the things that were true uh, many, many years ago are now either problems that have been fixed or, uh, or things that, that are changing. So maybe let's play true, true false with this one. So Groovy's dynamic nature means that projects inherently have more runtime errors. So who thinks this is true? Who thinks that I wrote this in a very tricky way? <laughs> yes, so um, it's actually a true. So I wanted to throw something true in here. They're not all false. Um, but, so, and, and this seems like a bad thing, right? Like, why do we want more runtime errors? And we don't. But we take this as a, um, a, a cost, like, benefit analysis. And we, we're engineers, so we try to find ways to engineer around this, right? We make sure that we have good processes in place. We do code reviews extensively. Make sure you're, you're writing good tests. 
Um, I'm, of course, if you uh, didn't hear her yesterday, I'm very involved with CodeNARC. So static analysis is another thing that's very important in Groovy because uh, we want to try and catch these, these potential pitfalls as early as possible. Uh, so uh, this, this comes in with a, a slide that Yvonne gave at Greech. Uh, as part of his talk, and I really liked it because I think that it, it, it really goes a long way to try and counter um, this thing. That uh, in, in Groovy, it's very important like, to write tests, not just because it's, it's Groovy. I mean, I write bugs in every language, right? Um, but having this a part of the community and having such great access to testing frameworks means that we can, we can try and counter this. OK, another one that may be potentially tricky. So who thinks that Groovy is a dynamically typed language? One, two, three, handful. Who thinks that it is not dynamically typed? Who thinks I'm being tricky again? <laughs> Everyone, OK, yes. So <laughs> this is uh, almost true, right? So uh, the, the word that we use is Groovy is optionally typed. So it can be dynamically typed, uh, and it can be done using static compilation. So this, whether or not this is true actually varies a lot based on w your environment, right? It depends on whether you're using static compilation. It depends on whether, uh, whether you have other structures in, in place. Uh, we definitely don't like using def when we don't have to. But if you want a really good deep dive and explanation into this, you should read Groovy in action. So they gave out a book this morning. I've got a, a discount code towards the end. Um, chapter one of Groovy in action is, uh, went a long way in helping me understand how the type system works. So I recommend that you read it too. So. Groovy is not suitable for production apps. Does anyone think it's true? Who has heard this argument before? Almost everyone, right? OK. So uh, hopefully, all of us can counter and say, no. Just, just no. <laughs> um, and if you need help, uh, there are so many other companies that are using Groovy in production. This is the banner at the bottom of groovylang.org, uh, and it, it shows, I'm sure some of these are a little bit outdated. I, I know personal stories from a few of these companies that they've switched. Maybe they're, they're not using uh, Grails anymore. They switched to Groovy with Spring Boot. But most of them still have some, even some legacy code using Groovy. And uh, everyone here that can attest to it, if you want to join the Groovy community Slack, you can hear, I mean, I've seen so many people now come in from so many interesting companies all in, and government organizations all over the world. So we can and do use Groovy in production. Okay. So who has heard that Groovy is slow? Who thinks that Groovy is slow? One. OK. And yes, it's another trick, right? OK. So what, it, what is the, the key here is when I hear every time I hear Groovy is slow, Groovy is slow, what, it, what do you mean by slow? So it really depends on uh, what we're talking about. So yes, if you write really perfect Java code, you can get some fine tuning that Groovy just has with, with some overhead. But it's not as slow as a lot of people think. And this is one of the things that's changed over time. So the original Groovy had a lot of overhead. Um, it was what we did then. Um, but now, if you, if you use static compilation, you use newer versions, you're upgrading, um, it's really exciting to see some of the things that are happening in Groovy 2.5. Uh, th this is not true, really true anymore, right? Uh, so there's actually a really interesting LinkedIn post that I found. If you're really concerned about some of the minute details of how to make Groovy faster, there's an, an interesting LinkedIn article. And so it goes through some things about like 
uh, looping. So there, there are some uh, implementations of, of loops in Groovy, and uh, this is one of the things I studied, uh, that, are, that, that just have overhead. And if you don't need to use that that method, then then don't. And so it says so if, uh, yeah, ju just replace replace certain things, and you can get a little better. Some things about how to m configure your applications to run a little bit better. Anyway, so um, the next one, uh, you can write a project entirely in statically compiled Groovy. Uh, <laughs> yes. So, the yeah, the, you, you've noticed a pattern here. These are all intentionally vague, but the, these come from things that that I've legitimately heard or seen in blog posts, and things that uh, we we as a community have to have to like have have arguments and encounter. Um, and so, yes, of course, this is true. So, rather. Who in here has written a project that is entirely in statically compiled Groovy? No, no, uh, like with with at compile in in the Gradle uh, Gradle config on every file with no uh, no exceptions. Maybe, maybe um, it can be done, right? Uh, most times we like the fact that uh, we can do these special dynamic features. And so we may add static compilation. Oh, yeah, I'm. <laughs> uh, we may uh, add them at, the, at the, the greater level and then use just, just what we need to. So, um, yeah. So this is another perhaps outdated one. So Grails is just. Rails for the JVM, right? Or it's even better uh, when you when you see someone who who picked up on on a blog post or an article from like what fifteen years ago now that says uh, gro or, uh, groovy on Grails, right? Uh, so this is this is outdated, although although Grails did start. As a uh, as a Rails-like framework for the JVM, we saw we've seen in the keynotes here in in all of the stuff that's happening that Grails has very much diverged from that original NVC model and is going into to much more streamlined and much more uh, profile-based uh, application styles. Okay, so I do have just one more for you. That Groovy is dead, right? I mean, Pivotal dropped support. Gradle said that the builds were moving to Kotlin. Who, who still uses Groovy, right? I had to have one cat picture. <laughs> so um, I, I always roll my eyes when I hear this. Um, and, and so I, I had to actually look it up. So every, I, I hear that the usage, the usage is going down. So many companies are switching away from it. But the thing that I found most interesting is uh, asking, asking people in the community for, for statistics. So I was able to get uh, the Groovy downloads list that usually Guillaume uh, puts in his presentations that, that shows this trend over time. And so, just just as a little pointers in here, this is when Pivotal ended support for Groovy. This is when Gradle did the announcement. Um, something happened here. Uh, I heard something about like Jenkins made an announcement and has been promoting Groovy a little bit more. But we see that uh, the the these rumors are are definitely not true. The the graph has skyrocketed uh, recently. It's actually getting more popular, not less popular. Okay, and so these, this is a little bit better breakdown. This is, uh, but these are just the bin trace statistics, but it tells you uh, by version, right? And it, you can actually look at this one. So this is not private data. This is public data that you can pull from the, the bin trace statistics uh, for Apache Groovy. And, and so we see like that the, the newer releases uh, in the alphas and the, the betas are, are getting downloaded, and that adds to it too. Um, 
But this is, I mean, this is just from a year? Like, th this isn't even uh, that, that long of a, of a timeline, and we still see, see an upward trend. And I think that once the, I mean, so 2.5 is released, uh, if we can get 3.0 out, uh, that'll, that'll help too. Okay. So, yeah, so Groovy downloads are up and higher than they ever were. Um, part of that, I'm sure, helps from uh, joining the Apache, Apache project, um, or sorry, Apache Foundation and becoming an Apache project. Uh, we now have more contributors than ever before. And the argument that uh, Pivotal support uh, really hurt Groovy um, means, and, and if you go back and read the, uh, the article that they put out when they made that decision, it said because there are so many external contributors, and that has even grown. There are more new contributors. Even though there, are a company, there aren't as many full-time staff on Groovy, uh, there are still companies sponsoring like OCI. Uh, so the, the release cycle's gotten a little bit better. Uh, there's a lot of improvements, and the, the work on Groovy, even if we, we aren't as rele releasing as much as, or as frequently, sorry, as some other projects, there are major changes coming that take time to work on, we're, and we'll get there. So definitely an, a big shout out to Daniel, who has done a significant portion of the work for the Parrot Parser, and who unfortunately couldn't be here. I really, really, really hoped that he could give a talk on that. Um, but, but maybe next year, right? And then, uh, it, and it's not just Groovy, too. So the, the Grails team and the work that they've done, I can't even keep up with the releases anymore. Um, they're, they're moving so quickly and doing so much uh, awesome work. And that kind of, that, that goes to promoting the new, uh, new features and new things that are happening. Okay. So most of these, uh, the answers, to most of these questions actually come in the Groovy book. I know it's massive. If you saw it on the table, it's, it's this thick. Uh, but it is really the go-to guide. Uh, and if you use that discount code, uh, that it's actually posted. Several, several speakers have in, included it. Uh, you can get a little bit off, off the book. From, it's a Manning publication. Uh, if, yeah, for anyone watching the video recording, it's probably not valid anymore. <laughs> so. Okay, so uh, we've now passed phase two, right? So we've talked about some features of the language, things that we like, uh, some, some good counter arguments that you can present, uh, numbers and statistics. So now hopefully you have someone, someone on board uh, that might be interested. So how do you even start at, with adding Groovy, particularly if you're joining an organization that's already using something else? So the first thing I, I try to look at is, are you already using Groovy? Maybe you don't even know. I run into a lot of people who don't identify as Groovy developers. They say, oh, I'm a Java developer, but I write my tests in Spock. So uh, th they are using Groovy, but no one's talking about it. So uh, maybe, maybe they're using Jenkins. Uh, usually, if you're using Groovy with Spring Boat, you know about it. Um, but maybe another team in your organization is. Uh, the, the Apache Spark thing is, is a talk that Guillaume gave. Um, it's not inherently supported, but uh, he talks about how to do that. Uh, SOAP UI has some interesting uh, Groovy scripting, as does JMeter. So these were two that I actually didn't know about until I heard someone else talking about them. Uh, that they use, they use Groovy for some of the scripting stuff. Uh, I went to, I went to a, a talk at a, a Women Who Code meetup in Berlin last week and uh it, it was on it was on graph databases and i kind of read the abstract and i thought it would be be interesting i i've done a lot of graph database work and, and knew about tinkerpop and gremlin but she did the she did an entire 45 minute talk and uh didn't really identify as as being a, a groovy groovy developer uh and so there are there are lots of people that are already using it. Maybe you can uh, make some alliances with people in other parts of your, your organization. And even Elasticsearch had an older, uh, uh, 
They, they've deprecated it now and use their own language that's kind of groovy-like. But maybe there's an older one. So the most pr uh, interesting one is Spock. Uh, this was one of the replies that came to my original uh, message. And so Renee says that it's, it, oh, it, and it's my opinion too, <laughs> that uh, Spock is the best testing framework for the JVM. And uh, I chose his quote, but there were several, several like it in the, in the thread. Uh, and I think one of the reasons why people either start with Spock or, uh, or at least can, can get it is because you can add it just in your tests. So you don't have to sell that it, it's, it needs to be uh, part of your main project. Uh, and in the features that you get, you write tests so much faster, uh, write more tests, you can use data tables, and many of the awesome features that if you, um, there's a Spock 101 talk, so you can, can watch that one too. Okay. Uh, and maybe you can try a, a small uh, proof of concept. So uh, I think this is something that I, I've heard a few people say that, I mean, sometimes you just need to see if something is going to work. Uh, it doesn't need to be fancy. Integrate with an API, create some kind of dashboard to see how it's going to look, and then present it to another department who actually makes the final decision. Uh, the advantage of a, of a framework like Grails, even now, is that it's really easy to stand something up quickly. Uh, when I go to uh, hackathons or startup weekends or things like that, uh, I like using Grails because uh, I can get something small out the door really quickly, deploy it to Amazon, uh, and maybe, maybe you can try that too. So once you have uh, hopefully brought more people on board to the Groovy community, you're going to need some, some help, right? Because it, it takes time to teach people. Um, yes. <laughs> uh, and and there, there are a lot of awesome resources. So uh, there's a Groovy users mailing list, which is uh, good if you, if you feel comfortable asking questions that way. Uh, you can also ask questions on Stack Overflow. Um, I think one of the members of the Groovy community answers almost everything faster than I read them. Um, so yeah, Tim. Uh, so, so shout out and thank you to him. Uh, and so there's lots of ways that you can, you can get help. Uh, we also have the Groovy community Slack team. Uh, and, and it's not just about asking questions for help. If you want to contribute something, you want, you want to just see if other people would use this library that you're, you're coming up with, you can propose new things and then find someone else who might be interested in working on it with you. Uh, and rather than, uh, so if you do see an issue, uh, you should contribute back. It's really easy. There's lots of guides on how to contribute, and even documentation is helpful. So if you think, oh, I don't want to, I don't know how to like fix this bug or or do this thing, there are lots of people who just contribute changes or typos in the documentation. Any small thing can help someone else. Uh, and and we continue to stay connected by attending events like this uh, and speaking. Everyone has something to talk about, uh, so please submit and, and come for next year. And if you are one of the few people who is working for a company that just isn't, uh, isn't on board with Groovy, you can come join us. <laughs> so, uh, so, so come talk to us at Zenjob. We are using Groovy and really excited to, to help you on your Groovy, Groovy journey. Okay. So... Uh, yeah, so the, the conclusion is that uh, Groovy's fun. We have a great community. You can use it in lots of different ways. Uh, there, and it, it's not in all or nothing. You can start with just, just doing your tests. Uh, but we have a major uh, problem with, with not having, having good marketing. So please start talking about it. Talk with your boss, your coworkers. Um, it, try to address blog posts if you see that people are uh, are continuing to spread the the groovy myths and and tell them the truth. So uh, and then rather than so rather than talking bad, if you see a problem, please contribute. It's an Apache project. It's open source. Anyone can shape the future. So that is what I have. Thank you very much. Uh, please rate this talk. Um, and if you have any more uh, groovy truth or myths or things that you hear 
or maybe you have a, an argument that you can't counter, uh, let me know either at the end or, uh, or send me a, a mail or, or on Twitter or something. Yep. Okay, so I guess we, we do have a little bit of time. Uh, what questions do you have related to, to this argument? Yes, Kevin. Okay. Okay. So, uh, so the question for everyone is, how do I ca counter the argument that IntelliJ support for Groovy is not as good as uh, for just writing plain Java, correct? Or any other language on the JVM. Um, or not any, or uh, other, other languages on the JVM. For example, Kotlin. Um, right. So that, that is an interesting uh, perspective. And so um, actually, so Daniil is here, not here, here, but uh, here at the, at the conference. Uh, and so he does a lot of support for IntelliJ on Groovy. Uh, the things that we can do are to keep voting for the feature requests. Um, if you find a bug, report a bug. Um, it, because they, it, if you look at the publications and the, th the information that comes out from IntelliJ, or not just IntelliJ, but from JetBrains, um, they they aren't interested in in helping because we i mean we use the we use IntelliJ too um but we need to to make sure that we uh we tell them about it and we we can be we can be a little more vocal perhaps and and help sway that um and hopefully that's something that uh we can counter a year from now right okay yes ralph So, so to repeat for everyone, um, Ralph said that uh, one of the advantages of Groovy is that you don't necessarily need an IDE. Uh, that uh, you can you can do a lot with with other just text editors and other things, um, and that's that's definitely true for some of the the simpler things. I do really appreciate having an IDE for working in in Grails and particularly in large systems where I need to do breakpoint debugging. Um, but yeah, for simple things, Groovy Console is great. Um, there's we a web, if you didn't know about it, there's a, uh, a Groovy Web Console that you can use just to try things out. You don't even need it installed on your computer. You can just go to a, to a URL. Um, I don't know it off the top of my head, but uh, you can search for it on Google. Yes, Andres. Okay, so so the the comment question is uh, how do we combat the fluctuations in the Tayobi index? Right. Yeah. So the the main problem with the Tayobi index is that one month Groovy will be rated fifteen, and the next month it'll be rated forty or sixty, and um, the the ranking that is is used by Tayobi is is pretty well publicized, right? So the, um, that information continues to get spread. Uh, and, and so that, that perpetuates myths, right? That it's not very popular or, um, and, and all of that is like sample, sample bias. So um, there was a, another survey that went out recently that, um, or we got the results of the survey back recently that mentions like percentages of usage of Groovy in the Java community. But if the survey was only sent to people in certain Java like ecosystems, then that's going th like that's sample bias. And and Tayobi kind of works the the same way that uh, their algorithms are uh, fluctuating a lot from from month to month and. Uh, yeah, so we need to figure out how to convince management types that just read the read the one line uh, summary. Hmm. 
That's, and that's a good question because uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a marketing and a per perpetuation thing. Like, and and w it's important to stay positive about it, right? Because one of, one of the things that I wanted to do, I didn't want to, to harp on, on what Groovy does, like, like the problems with other languages because that's negativity and that's the negativity that's coming towards us too. Oh, Groovy, Groovy doesn't do this thing, so I'm going to use this other language. Um, and so it, it's difficult to counter an argument like that without... Um, just saying, oh, the TLB index is bad, because there, there are sometimes when it's to our advantage, too. There was a, a point, but a year ago, where we kept ending up in the top 20, and everyone was confused but happy about it. Um, yeah. Maybe we can... Uh, if, we, if we come up with our own survey, then that'll be major major uh, bias, too. But um, yeah, so if you... If you oh. And uh, as, as individuals, we can say uh, to keep contributing to the, the servers that we see and, and respond with Groovy. Um, but I'm not sure how to do, like, yeah. M maybe, maybe we can ask my CTO what, uh, what blogs he reads and, and how, to, uh, how to argue with him. So. <laughs> mm -hmm. Actually, yeah. So that I guess that that's that's the takeaway from your your answer um, is that uh, there are C CTOs and CIOs that see past these indices like like Gian, and they uh, particularly. So he he talked about the experience that he's had with Grails for the last ten years. He scaled very big companies in uh, in Germany using Groovy and Grails, and uh, yeah. So. So there are there are some, and perhaps they'll talk with each other. So, okay, I think we have. According to this, we still have five more minutes left. If, uh, yeah, this. Is yeah, uh, yeah. What do you, what do you want to do? This is this is your time. You showed up in person to a conference. Uh, this is the advantage of showing up. You can ask me anything. I may not know the answer, but you can ask. <laughs> yes, Kevin. Okay, so yeah, so I guess it was just it was a, a comment and a follow up on um, Ralph's uh, discussion of, of IDE support, or rather the that that editors are okay, um, and the example was Visual Visual Studio, that uh, Visual Studio Code is not an IDE and uh, has like it, it works just fine. Um, Right. Oh, um, yeah. So as an opportunity, 
for for someone to contribute um, support for Groovy because yeah, um, it's a very popular tool and having Groovy in the actually yeah. So I guess we can I, I guess I can tell a little bit of a side story. Um, before I actually got my first job using Groovy, I had heard of Groovy because I was using NetBeans. And when I when I downloaded NetBeans, there are the options of like which plugins you want to do. And I saw Groovy, and I'm like, hmm, what's this language? And so I actually like checked it out. And then when I uh, when I saw the job posting for the company using Groovy, I'm like, hey, I already know what that is. So I think that that is a really interesting point to make. Uh, and, and it promotes the community in general by even just having a, a name. Of course, we want to make sure it works because having broken plugins is bad press. But, um, but yeah, that's a that's an opportunity to to gain more more community, and at least uh, publicize the community a bit. Okay. Well, I will be around, uh, and you can come talk to us about. Send job, you can talk about Groovy, any of the other 10 hats I'm wearing today as speaker, crew, track host, video recorder. Um, so uh, yeah, I think it, it's lunchtime, so I'll stop here. <laughs>